Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Asyaru ilaha illallah. Allah hu akhbar. Allah hu akhbar. Hey family. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you. Whatever side of the day I ask for that you're on. I just want to give a wake up shout to y'all this morning and I want you to come to order today. Come to order, come to order. I want you to spiritually come to order and I want you to mentally come to order. Because something is moving in the atmosphere. All right? Um, the older I get, and y'all know I'm every bit past 60 now. I feel good, da, 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 and I look good. I don't need you to tell me, but what I can say is, all jokes aside, I want to give homage to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad this morning. Oh, I know a lot of y'all is like, oh, I'm done with you. Go on about your business then. Go on about your business. I think... God, Allah, Yahweh, whoever you call a higher being for the acknowledgement that he parted on us as black people. Okay? So I know a lot of y'all going to be offended by this, and that's okay. Because, see, the only way you're going to get past some stuff and the only way you're going to heal is to be able to take that pill and swallow it. It's about that big. Yay, big. And it hurts going down. Especially if you and the oppressor or if your group has been responsible for oppress, oppression. One of the most greatest things that Elijah Muhammad and who's been gone over 50 years now. Um, one of the greatest things he's given us is now coming to pass right now. I don't know if y'all are able to see the uh, people waking up all over the planet. When I the catalyst to this uh, uh, video is Nick Cannon and his situation. Oh, who they just kick off the other week? They call anti and many. We already know. Don't want to say the word, but y'all already know what that word is. Um. I don't understand how you can call a Semitic people anti-Semitic. The problem on the planet is the devil don't want to let go. And don't want the truth expound to all of humanity. That's the problem. There's no hate in my heart. There was no hate in Nick Hannon's, Nick Hannon's heart. Who else just got, uh, I can't think who just got uh, either terminated or blasphemed or whatever they did because they used that famous phrase, anti. Mm. And the most sickest thing is they use it to the people who really are Semitic. Now, if we were still stupid enough to fall for that, it wouldn't be a problem. But now that black folk are waking up all over the planet and we now see how the matrix is ran, they're rebellion. There, there's rebellion, I meant to say. One of the earliest things that I was disappointed about and I knew that killed my career in show business was that I couldn't do what the master wanted me to do. Had I not had the teachings of Elijah Muhammad before I was involved in show business, I'd have did everything, and I still did a whole bunch of stuff. Trust me. <laughs> I did a whole lot of stuff that I know I wouldn't have done had I had the discipline and still was in the un, up under the umbrella and the discipline of the, of the uh, Nation of Islam. But what, the, what, what did happen was I was afforded 
the opportunity at a young age to see if all that stuff was true. And because I had been brought up in a way that was different than a lot of my entertainer counterparts, I wouldn't change my name. They want they didn't want me to be Khadija anymore. They wanted me to be something else, and I could not be something else. They wanted me to um, represent in a way that just wasn't comfortable for me. Now, it entails a whole lot of other stuff in between there, but I'll just suffice it to say that. And I will say because of the teachings, I was woke at a very, a very, very, very early age. Because my father was an activist at a very, very early age. I did not succumb to a lot of the uh, dogma and the oppression in terms of the show business apparatus that's pushed on a lot of my entertainment brothers and sisters. It was just not pushed on me. I always have been self-sufficient. Everything that I have recorded as an adult has been 100% mine, has been 100% owned by me. And some people say, well, who the hell is you? I don't, I want to just, I'm going to go back here. And I know this is a little dated for a lot of y'all, but I got to go back here. And my introduction to show business was as a 12-year-old. Was as a 12-year-old. Um, and... What I found out at just a merely 12 year old, how some people wanted to pass me around, some people wanted to do things that I know I was like, uh uh. Because the only way I'm going to do something like that is that I got to like you. I don't even like you. This is the energy that always. Have permeated the music business. Oh, it's just done got totally out of hand now. But I want you to hear uh, uh, something that, hell, I think I was maybe 12 years old. Check it out. Listen to Tommy Mix on that face. I hear you, Tommy. <laughs> I think Tommy was every bit of 17. This is a bunch of teenagers just talking. <laughs> Listen to that bass. It's still funky. <laughs> All right, Mr. Ronald Robinson out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. One of the baddest guitar players in the land. I think this boy was all of 19. Slow down, Ron. Now you got... Well, of course, they was featuring Khadija, so y'all know me. I'm just a baby, though. Mm -hmm. 
I had some chops for a kid. So I'm not the only person that realized that, right? Now y'all get to hear Jimmy Ellison on them congas back there. This was real music. Somebody said that's some great old ass kicking tune. Well, that's me. That's yours truly. And um, after I traveled across the country promoting this song as a 12, 13 year old child, pretty much, uh, I learned a lot about show business. I learned the apparatus and what goes on in show business. And um, something about the teachings of Elijah Muhammad would not allow me to partake in the things that probably would have had me very successful at this age. Oh, but I would have sold my soul. And there would have been people making money off of me. And I, of course, I had been whoring myself out. And it just didn't show, it just didn't turn out that way. So what I want to say to all of y'all that are waking up on the planet, from my brother Nick Cannon, to go and check out Sister Tamar Braxton, so somebody y'all all thought was uh, just so, so out there, so wild, so ghetto. Well, she got a hold to uh, <laughs> a real African. I think he taught her some things, but being in show business long enough, you will learn some things. And with that being said, I want to uh, 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 respect and honor each and every artist that takes control of their uh, work, their artistic uh, 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 manifestos, your masters, and allow these people to know that you're no longer going to die broke. Anytime you can look at the Kardashians and see them as an empire for nothing but selling a sex tape and then you see some five talented sisters like the Braxtons and they still got to struggle and they can't get over the hump and they got to do what they got to do and sell their stuff the way they got to sell and they don't own their show, then there's some problems. You see the racism? Our Dr. Francis Crest told us that there's eight uh, 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 eight areas of our lives that white supremacy control economics education entertainment labor law religion uh, sex politics and war actually there's nine areas I'm, my bad think about it they could, all of it is controlled by white supremacy White folk, y'all may not want to hear that because you're on the other end of the group, but I got to let it be known. I got to speak up. I can't remain silent. Y'all have taken our labor. You have taken our works. You have taken our talent. You have exploited us in every way, shape, form, and fa or fashion. And now that we want to take control of our works, we're running into the devil and his dominions and his demons. But I want to say to y'all, you might not be on a level like a Nick Cannon. I never had the money of a Nick Cannon or whoever else they just slaughtered down for saying they accused of making uh, Semitic remarks. But I will say this. The devil didn't use me. And if I got anything I can go to my grave with. Because the devil didn't use me. He didn't exploit me. He didn't take my gifts. And, sh and, and, and exploit my gifts to leave my family broke and to leave his family wealthy. 
like they try to do Stevie Wonder. Has Stevie Wonder paying for uh, um, his manager's kids' kids' education? See, this is the kind of double dirty stuff that, that, that has been going on for centuries after centuries. And guess what? It's going to stop. It's going to, it's, you're going to stop looking at reality TV and looking at black women just fighting and, sh and, 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 and uh, like there's nothing else for us to accomplish. You're going to stop looking at reality TV to see us act a fool for you. So you continue to have somebody to look down on. No. Do a whole bunch of Jersey Wives or a whole bunch of whoever because we don't want to play that role no more. We've clowned and buffooned for you long enough. And now it's time for us to take our power, our products, our legal work back. And let's make this plan feel uh, the way it should be. Because you may no longer rip us off. Now, either we're going to die on our, we're going to die uh, 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 on our knees or we're going to stand on our feet. Because can't nobody ride your back unless your back is bent. Now, with that being said, if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe and share. If you don't like what you heard, you can leave a comment down there for me, too. In the meantime, be blessed, family.